Hello everybody and welcome back to Guided Hacking. This is Fresh K and today we're going to be taking a look at White Snake Stealer. This is a new stealer that has recently hit the market and supports stealing from both Windows and Linux users. It's like any other stealer with a few changes that makes it interesting. It uses Telegram as a C2 exfiltration method and will send these .wsr files to the threat actor where these will then be read by a local client like Redline that will display information about the victim and all of the stolen information. So I have a binary here. We can see in detects it easy that it is written in .NET. And because it's written in .NET, I've opened it up within DNSPY. Going into DNSPY and then going to the entry point, we can look at main here and we already see some issues with our reverse engineering and malware analysis. We can see that there is a function and then what looks like two obfuscated strings and what this is is string encryption and this is used so that a reverse engineer can't read these strings easily and can't easily analyze the file clicking into the method here we can see that it takes two parameters of a first string and a second string it'll loop through the first string and xor it with the second string but before we can continue with our analysis we need to get rid of this obfuscation so how do we do that well what we could do is we could go into d4 dot and what d4 dot will allow us to do is to invoke that decryption method by simply using two arguments so we can point d4 dot to our white snake binary and then we could do string type delegate which this will call the string decryption method and then we can tell d4 dot which string decryption method we want to use by using the parameter of string talk and to find the decryption method what we want to do is just copy the function name you can also do its offset in the binary and all you have to do is just put it into quotes followed by two semicolons and close it off with more quotes and we can press enter and you can see that it detected an unknown obfuscator and is cleaning it and it's renaming all the obfuscated symbols and has saved it there are lots of different ways to deobfuscate these encrypted strings and you can call many different flags here of default which is just a static if it recognizes the encryption method then it'll statically replace it or you could do delegate, which will use a delegate to call the real string decryptor, which is what we just did there. So we were calling the real decryption function that you could see here, and then inserting our decrypted string that was returned from that function. Or you can use emulation, which will call the real de string decryptor and emulate certain instructions. Looking at main, we can see a massive difference with all of the strings here. I'm gonna quickly go through a lot of these different functions and just touch on them very quickly. So first of all, we have a mutex and what this mutex is doing is it's taking the string of this and then creating a mutex on it. And if the mutex already exists, then the binary will exit. And what this is doing is just making sure that the malware doesn't run twice. Uh, going forward, we then see a creation of a byte array here and clicking into these we see a massive xml document that will be used for the exfiltration formatting once the malware has stolen all of the files we can see that it's got things here such as user profile brave software and wallet grabber and so on so this kind of indicates as to what the functionalities of this malware is but moving on and scrolling up we can see some rsa key values here which i'll touch on later what looks like a telegram bot api key and the api chat and this will be used for c2 exfiltration so this is really your c2 config right here and this will just populate this byte array scrolling down we can also see the create function here and this will just process the commands what it'll do is populate that xml document with all of the information that is appropriate and what is needed to be shown to the threat actor I will 
touch on the anti-VM here though. So it's got a bunch of strings for virtual box, VM box, VMware, so on and so forth. And then we'll select from the computer system and look at the manufacturer to make sure that it doesn't contain any of these. And if it does contain any of these, then it will exit the malware. So this is an attempt at anti-VM. Moving on, what I really want to touch on now is the encryption of the exfiltrated data. So unlike other malware, usually they will just send the data within clear text to Telegram, but this malware is smart and knows that if you have a Telegram API key within your malware, people can use that to take a look at what the malware is doing. So what they do is they do encryption on the exfiltrated data. What we first look at is it will XML serialize the, that data that was stolen from the victim. And what it'll do is it will then put that into bytes. This is what will be sent to the C2. And it will then compress that. And that compression is just done with gzip. It'll create a new byte array and create RNG crypto service provider get bytes. So what RNG crypto service provider is, is it's a randomized crypto service that you can then populate a byte array with random bytes. So what it's doing is getting 32 random bytes. Going on, it will then call RC4. And RC4 will be called on the compressed gzip data. So this is the compressed exfiltrated data with a key of the random bytes. Clicking into this, it's just a normal RC4 implementation. And the results of that will be put into array two. So it will then use RSA crypto service provider and will create a new RSA crypto service provider. It will then get the public key for encryption from the malware config, which we can look at here. And this is what I touched on earlier. So this is the public key for the RSA, RSA encryption. It is not the private key. So to decrypt whatever this encrypts, you will have to have the private key, which is only in the possession of the threat actor. And that's where it becomes pretty smart. So what it's doing here is it's encrypting the exfiltrated data with a public key that you wouldn't be able to decrypt if you were sniffing the traffic. And to go one step further, it, it will, after encryption, take the encrypted data, it will take the length of this file format start. This is just to indicate to the threat actors software that will decrypt all of this, that this is a exfiltrated document with this start here. It will then add the RC4 encrypted data and that data will just stay as it is with the normal random key that was created earlier. And with that key, it will then be encrypted by the aforementioned RSA encryption. So that public key will encrypt the RC4 key and then that will be put at the end of the file. Meaning that if you wanted to decrypt the exfiltrated data, what you would have to do is you would have to get the RSA encrypted RC4 key. You would ha then have to decrypt it with your RSA private key to get these 32 bytes that you can then use to RC4 decrypt the exfiltrated information. Meaning that even if you were to sniff this exfiltration, you would not be able to understand or see what was being exfiltrated by this dealer. And after that, once all of the information is encrypted, it will then call send and it will create a HTTP request to the a Telegram API, sending that all of that encrypted information that is created to the threat actor where they can then take a look at it within their local panel. I hope that this was a good introduction to the white snake stealer and what I found interesting about it. Until the next one, goodbye. If you enjoyed this video, a like would help a lot and subscribe to be notified of future uploads. If you haven't already, check out guidedhacking.com for a step-by-step -step introduction to game hacking and an ever-growing catalog of content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.